Hello everybody, this is Dr. A with the next video in our Basics of the Lab series and this one is an introduction to urinalysis. A quick anatomy and physiology review, we'll look at the kemies. Um, there are five major functions of the kemies. They remove metabolic and toxic waste from the body. They maintain a fav favorable water balance. They conserve or secrete electrolytes. They regulate the pH of interstitial fluids and they act as an endocrine structure because they produce erythropoietin. They can convert the inactive form of vitamin D to the active form of vitamin D, and they produce renin, and all of those are hormones. And so obviously the kidneys are what produces urine, and urine is going to be a subject of the next few videos. The functional unit of the kidney is the nephron, and this is where urine is formed. Each kidney contains a million nephrons, so if you have two kidneys, you have two million nephrons. Urine is an ultrafiltrate of plasma, meaning the nephrons filter the plasma, and the, the liquid that's filtered from the plasma um, is then reabsorbed as it goes through the nephron. Um, there are substances that are valuable, valuable molecules of how they absorb, such as amino acids, certain vitamins, the uh, glucose, et cetera, some of the electrolytes, and um, other wastes uh, are secreted. And this could be um, drugs that were too big to filter, or it can be um, more hydrogen ions that are in excess. And ultimately, once the nephron has done its job, that filtrate that came from plasma is now urine, and urine is what leads the kidney to enter the bladder and then eventually be voided out um, as urine. A urinalysis is the physical, chemical, and microscopic examination of urine. It involves performing a number of tests to detect and measure various compounds that can be found in urine. Uh, the analysis, analysis of urine may be the earliest known diagnostic test done in the lab. It's an easy way to evaluate various renal and non-renal problems by a very non-invasive method, which is again probably why it was the early, one of the earliest diagnostic tests because urine is just so easy to obtain. Um, some examples of the information that can be obtained by testing a urine sample. This is uh, with the urine dipstick analysis. The bilirubin test, it can evaluate liver function. So if that bilirubin test becomes elevated on the urine dipstick, then it's definitely a clue that something is going on with the liver that needs to be investigated. The nitrate test looks for the presence of bacteria. So uh, bacteria, certain especially gram-negative bacteria, will cause a nitrate test to become positive. The pH test monitors the acid-base balance. Uh, normal blood pH is 7.4, so slightly alkaline, and then we get rid of excess acid through urine. Um, the more acid the urine is, then probably the more acids we're producing in the body. Uh, but this is part of, production of urine is part of the body's effort to maintain acid-base balance. Glucose testing, um, it measures carbohydrate metabolism. So if there's glucose that's spilling over into the urine and it's showing up in the urine, then um, this could indicate problems with carbohydrate metabolism, such as diabetes. Or it could be that just the person that just did a, something really sweet really recently. The ketone test can detect an increased beta oxidation of lipids. This means basically when a person is burning fats as fuel. So this could be something that a person is trying to achieve. For example, if they're on a ketogenic diet, then they would want to see a positive ketone test. Uh, but it could be a bad thing if that person is in diabetic ketoacidosis or DKA. Um, one of the quick ways to tell the difference would be um, in a diabetic ketoacidosis patient, the glucose would be also positive. So we'd have elevated glucose uh, in the urine and uh, ketones in the urine, whereas if a person is on a ketogenic diet, that glucose should be completely negative and the ketones should be, you know, at least detectable. A specific gravity can estimate water retention. 
Um, it's a measure, if you will, of concentration of urine. The more concentrated a urine is, the higher the specific gravity is going to be. The leukocyte testing can detect infection, so it detects the presence of white cells because um, the white cells produce an enzyme called leukocyte esterase, and that is what is being detected. The urine color can also be a clue to infection uh, and the presence of abnormal metabolites. So for example, a yellow-orange color could indicate the presence of bilirubin. And odor can also reveal the presence of metabolites that are indicative of a particular disorder. A fruity or sweet odor is suggestive of a diabetic condition. I would say a urine with a really strong ammonia or odor might be indicative of an infection. Other tests are available also to be done on urine, so for alcohol, drug abuse, protein metabolism, the endocrine system, and the cardiovascular system. And we're not getting into all of that in this video. All right, and this wraps it up for our intro to urinalysis.